to see how far our dreams of computing have come, it helps to return to some of the original visions of what computing could be. And one of the first visions was um, had by a man named Charles Babbage. And he conceived of something that he referred to as an analytical engine. And as far as we can tell, the analytical engine was one of the first conceptions of what would go on to become a modern computer. So Charles Babbage is sometimes referred to as the father of the computer. Um, Charles Babbage's creation, so Charles Babbage was, was a polymath, um, he was a mathematician, he was a mechanical engineer, um, but his vision of the computer was sort of bound up in the technologies of his own time. This was way before transistors, this was way before really electronics as we know them. And so, you know, here's a, a picture, this is sort of a, a, a a, a, a mock-up or a model of a part of the analytical engine. And what you can see is this is a physical object. This is a mechanical object. This is something that I guess would be powered by steam or, or some other source of, of, of power. And there's actually lots of moving parts and, and, and rotating things and things like this. And some of the early uh, computer inventors actually were working with sort of physical computers. This is before you had even you know the, the precursors to the transistors before you had the uh, vacuum tubes and things like this. So you know they were working with these mechanical objects. You can imagine how intricate and how complex and how carefully designed these types of things would actually have to be. And despite the fact that Charles Babbage left blueprints and left designs for the analytical engine engine and some of his other conceptions, there's something called the difference engine that's actually been created. Um, I think after he died, people sort of put it together and got it to work. The analytical engine has never sort of been fully assembled or realized. It's just this incredibly complex thing. Um, now it's very interesting to note that along with the first computers also came the first computer algorithms. And um, in this case, Charles Babbage had some help from uh, another pioneer of early computing and someone that we celebrate today as, as a, uh, one of the first, I shouldn't say one of the first, the first uh, woman in computing. And it's uh, important to note that the Charles Babbage and um, a Countess Ada Lovelace were working together on this project. So Charles Babbage was corresponding with Ada Lovelace. Ada Lovelace was obviously for her time, this is the 1800s, fairly unusual in that she was interested in math and she was extremely well educated. And you know this was her passion. Um, she sort of forego, she forwent sort of the things that women were expected to do at the time, set off on her own course and got involved in this project. And it's actually through Ada Lovelace's descriptions of the analytical engine and how it worked that we have the best picture of exactly what Charles Babbage had in mind. So, you know, one way to think about it is that Charles Babbage had the idea and Ada Lovelace through her correspondence with him helped bring this idea to fruition, helped uh, explain it to other people because this was also something that was so novel, it was hard to, for other people to understand. Ada Lovelace is also credited with inventing, you know, along with the first computer, what are computers for? Fundamentally, computers are for executing algorithms. And Ada Lovelace described one of the first computer, the first computer algorithm uh, for, I think, for computing Bernoulli numbers that would actually be, have been able to run on this piece of hardware, on this analytical engine. So she described uh, one of the first things you could do with this early computer. Um, and like many of the pioneers of, of early computing, Charles Babbage's vision of what this device could accomplish has certainly been realized in the form of the modern computer. The modern computer doesn't look like this. It took lots of invention. It took a lot of new technologies. It took things like the transistor in order to realize this type of computing apparatus. I don't think I'm not sure we would have ever been able to get there just using the technologies that Charles Babbage had at his fingertips, but he was still able to imagine the potential of such a machine, a general purpose computer that could be programmed, you know, and Ada Lovelace is sometimes referred to as the first programmer because she came up with this algorithm, could be programmed to perform arbitrary computations. So this is, you know, one of the first visions that really shaped the field of computing. We look back on Charles Babbage and Ada Lovelace as these incredible visionaries, way ahead of their time in foreseeing, in many ways, the capabilities, if not the construction of today's modern computers.